Remember your first car. Mine was a 1966 Dodge Polaro with a 318 engine. I bought it at Pyramid Motors just outside Youngstown, Ohio for about 600 bucks. Bought a lot of Chrysler products over the years, uh, four minivans in a row. Uh, I've got two Jeeps sitting in my driveway right now, but I don't think I'll be buying another Chrysler product anytime soon. I won't be buying anything from Chrysler or from the new Chrysler or Dodge or Jeep because of what they've done to thousands of people who work in their dealerships all across the land. These dealerships are independent businesses. They're franchises. They're not owned by Chrysler. They're not creditors or liabilities to the company. These are the folks who work in these dealerships to sell us our cars in towns all across America. They fix our cars. They contribute to our Little League teams. They send their kids to school every morning just like we do. When Chrysler teamed up with the federal government, they decided to close 789 independent dealerships across America. They terminated their contracts without just cause. A bunch of bureaucrats in Washington got the bright idea that having fewer dealerships would be a better way to make money, make more profits. So they threw thousands of innocent people out on the streets. There have been lots of people running away from this story. No one wants to admit responsibility for ruining the lives of these honest, hardworking Americans. Some people say it was the president's auto task force. Others say it was Chrysler using the cover of bankruptcy court. We may never know the truth about who was really responsible. Lots of people have written to the president and to Congress. Sad truth is, they don't care. Neither does the president's auto task force. They all see these thousands of lost jobs and ruined lives as collateral damage to their bigger goal. I've looked in the Constitution of the United States. I've tried real hard to find this sort of government takeover and this kind of action here in this document that is our legal government. Can't find it there either. When the government gets into the car business or any business, they always pick winners and losers. That's why this kind of idea doesn't belong in our Constitution or in our government. That's the way it was in the old Soviet Union. If you were a part of the party, of the special group, of the chosen few, you got the jobs, the lifestyle, all the benefits. But if you weren't part of the inside group, of the party, you got the bills. Looks like that's the way it's gonna be here in America, at least in the car business from now on. The president will dictate which companies are winners and losers and who gets the shaft. He'll use our tax dollars to bail some people out and others will be thrown out left without companies, jobs, or paychecks. So I won't be buying any more Chrysler products or Jeep or Dodge products as well. Not today, not ever. We wouldn't support the communists who did this in the Soviet Union. Why would we support companies doing the very same thing in America here today?